regional Australia is in the middle of a food revolution. Our little towns are overflowing with the freshest produce and most exciting cuisine. And it's our job to explore these places with the caravan in tow. We'll find delicious food, meet colourful local characters and show you the most beautiful places to make camp. Join Chef Macca, Tim and me, Emma, as we embark on our RV Daily Foodie Trails. Today on Foodie Trails, we're jumping into our ram trucks and towing the easy trails down the stunning south coast of New South Wales. Along the way, we'll get our hands dirty making bread and cheese before hitting the water to find some of Australia's best seafood. That is um, simply special. We'll unlock the gate on two beautiful private campsites before celebrating our adventure at a holiday park in the most magical location. Our foodie trail this week is all about the coast. It starts in beautiful Bermagui, before pushing south to Pambula, then finishing up in the historic fishing village of Eden. I absolutely love the south coast, I love it. Don't know much about Bermagui, but I'm looking forward to um, some of the things I know we've got planned. Well, Tim, I'll fill you in. Bermagui is famous for its incredible deep sea and game fishing. It's a truly stunning location where coastal estuaries flow into the sea beneath volcanic mountains, hiding some of Australia's best produce. First up, we head into the hills a little to make camp at Digadoo. This campsite is perched on the banks of a creek on a peaceful private property about 20 minutes west of Bermagui. In no time at all, we've set up our caravans and Chef Macca goes to the freezer for a little treat. This is called Let's Go Camping. Let's Go Camping Ice Cream. I think it's time for us to sit down and have a very, very important meeting. You've talked me into it. Like all good coastal adventures, this one starts with ice cream. And as much as I'd love to stay here relaxing all day, I'm heading into Bermagui to go back to school. Eastwood's Deli and Cooking School is a thriving cafe come delicatessen, come cooking school. And today, I'm going back to basics and learning just how easy it can be to make your own bread. Have you baked much bread in the past? I have never Emma? baked bread before. Have you? I'm, I'm ashamed to admit. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm a total newbie. It's good that it's a beginner's class. Yeah. Oh, no, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. Fine. You'll be amazed at what you can produce once you get your head around a couple of little tips. Kelly Eastwood moved to Bermagui from the Big Smoke after she fell in love with the region's natural beauty and incredible produce. And her cooking classes allow her to share this love of food. So what temperature is this oven? On? This is on 210 because it's a really quick one, but if you're doing it at home or in a caravan, you do it on 220. Okay. Fan forced. Back to the action and my bread is starting to take shape. I think you've made a 10 out of 10 bread loaf. Oh, stop it. She says that to all her students. <laughs> Not bad for a first attempt. Thank you. Thanks. Really good. And now all you have to do is just wait for 10 minutes, let it cool down a little bit, because you don't want to cut it while it's really, really hot. Um, and it'll still be nice and warm, and then you just need to try it with some fresh butter. Oh, fresh butter. Yum. Now Kelly shows me just how quick and easy it is to whip your own butter. We add a beautiful smoked salt, and it's time to taste. <laughs> Lovely. Absolutely. Why overcomplicate it? Mm. Mm. Like that pleasure. is good. Mm. Mm -hmm. And while I'm indulging, Tim's back at Camp Digadoo, kindly dealing with my grey water. Okay, while she's not here, we're going to peek inside Emma's caravan and show you about the water usage she's been going through. So here are three gauges. That's fresh, that's fresh, that's grey. This one is nearly empty, well is empty, she's still got another tank to go. Now as that's emptied, it's filled up the grey water tank over here, but what's important is what we do with that waste water. So these kind of campsites, obviously you're in the natural environment. What you dispose of, it's vitally important where you put it, and it's vitally important that you don't run your grey water hose down here, down the bank, and let it go into a creek. Who would do that? It's an absolute no-no. But meanwhile, back up there in camp, you also need to be aware of where your grey water is running to, where it puddles, because let's face it, when you leave your camp and the next person rolls in, they don't want to be parking up and putting their chairs on top of your little scum sea of toothpaste. No, they do not. For more information on how to dispose of grey water, head to rvdaily.com.au. 
Now, Chef Macca is off to meet a dairy farmer and cheesemaker whose award-winning products are a favourite for locals and travellers alike. We're in dairy country and I'm visiting a farm this afternoon where we're going to make ricotta cheese from the milk from the cows that I'm milking. Macca will be getting a ricotta making masterclass from Erica Dibton who owns and runs the multiple award winning Tilba Real Dairy. So they've got really good fat placement over their bodies. They are not, you might think that hollow concave makes them look skinny. These are actually quite well rounded cows. Okay. These beautiful Jersey cows are brought in from the fields to be milked twice a day. And Macca is yep, right in the thick of it. <laughs> You've got to be careful. They are live animals, so if they're out of sorts... I feel like I'm in the middle of a WWE oh. tournament here. I've got people coming. <laughs> yeah. oh. OK. Chin up. Oh, wait, Janus, here we go. Erica's team use this fresh milk and other local ingredients to make their handcrafted cheese, which is sold at the ABC Cheese Factory in nearby Tilba. But today we're in Erica's kitchen making the simplest cheese of all. So this is where it all happens. Absolutely, so the magic in the vat begins to happen, even in your house. So we've got that lovely fresh Jersey milk full of high fat and high protein, just divine. Add a healthy amount of fresh cream, gently rise to the boil, freshly squeeze some lemons. 400 mils, not bad. Lemon juice is poured in. But you can see that curd has formed already. Do not be tempted to keep stirring it. Lid goes on and it sits for five minutes. Place into the muslin. Whey is strained out. And hey presto, you've got ricotta cheese. 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 Mmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Yum. That's so creamy. How good is that? After the break, we travel south to Pambula to uncover some seafood magic. Before our foodie trail departs Bermagui, I'm popping into the local clinic. It's hard to have a bad day when you're travelling with your caravan. But if I ever am, there's one thing I know will cheer me up, ice cream, or in this case, gelati. Bermagui Gelati Clinic is a local institution right on the Bermagui Marina. And today, I'm finding out why. So we use the, the fruit to flavour our ice cream. There's no colours added. Um, fruit, sugar and water is what we use. And the, we use, really use the um, fruit as the base of our recipes. So we it, try and enhance that rather than take away from that. Only the freshest in-season local fruit is used in this beautiful gelati, made in the traditional Italian way. Chelsea has 28 different flavours to choose from. There's fig, ricotta honey and dates, pecan maple syrup, orange cardamom. Turns out the clinic has an arrangement with the locals where they can drop off fruit from their garden in exchange for gelato, which is probably how this flavour came to be. Come eh? Yes, quite a strong flavour, but beautiful. Mmm. Wow. That's making the side of my little cheeks here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that yeah. is very sour, but really yummy. Chelsea serves me up a double scoop and I'm a happy <laughs> little veggie mite. Back on the road, our foodie trail continues for about an hour down the coast to our next campsite, Marimbula Burnta Bush Camp, another private campsite with literally acres all to ourselves. So we spread out and relax. It's not long before Tim's off to Pambula to meet up with a bloke known round these parts as a bit of a character. Hey, nice welcome. to meet welcome, you. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. you very much. Brett Weingarth owns and runs Captain Sponge's Magical Oyster Tours. He made a sea change over 12 years ago and now manages 11 acres of oyster leases in beautiful Lake Pambula. Pambula Lake is one of the healthiest coastal estuaries in New South Wales, with excellent tidal flow that replenishes the water twice a day. That translates to seriously top-notch Sydney rock oysters. The Sydney rock oyster lands as a microscopic larval stage. It then grows to the point um, where it can spawn. It has its first spawning as a male and then changes sex and becomes female. So the way that they swim at that larval stage as well, they, they tend to swim and sink and swim and sink and that kind of thing. They're a crazy animal. 
And on Brett's tour, not only do you learn about how the oysters are farmed, but most importantly, you get to taste the produce. Well, I'm looking forward to sampling the, probably the freshest oyster I've ever tasted. Enjoy, Thank you. Jim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, not too good, you need to take another one. <laughs> oh my word. That is um, simply special. Thank you. Meanwhile, Chef Macca has stepped away from camp to meet up with a local chef at the hugely popular Wheeler's restaurant. Today, sous chef Evan Woolhouse is going to show Macca his seafood linguine, made with locally caught kingfish. Kingfish is renowned for its pale pink flesh and sweet, rich flavour. It's considered one of the finest sashimi fish in the world. So what we're going to do here is the pin bone run directly down the middle. You can be pretty greedy with how much we take here because that is the bloodline. If you don't get the bloodline out, it can taint the taste of the fish, so just be mindful of that and we'll show you exactly where that is today. The bloodline runs at least a centimetre along here generally. Yes. So what I like to do is come in on an angle. And you can see that's all bloodline. We can trim the remaining later and just knock the skin off. And today, Evan is going to gently smoke the fish. He covers the fillets in lemon zest and a 50-50 mix of sugar and salt. Then onto the smoking chips. Today we're using hickory. Uh, it's a pretty nice all round wood. I like yep. using it for everything. We're going to be smoking the fish in our fancy combi oven, but you can do it at home in a, in a box if you want. Just put a lid on it. <laughs> Into the oven they go. Just put a bit of a flame blocker there for the fish. The flames go in. This is where the magic happens, right in this little combi oven. You've got the fans blowing the air around and getting everything smoked up. Have a look at that right now. I mean, that's just... Absolutely full. Actually, it looks like my kitchen at home. <laughs> the smoked fillets are added to a mix of black tiger prawns, cherry tomatoes, chilli and garlic with a few fresh herbs. I like to put a little bit of the herb mix in at the start just so it cooks the flavour in there. Yes, really. Everything that we're doing is doable in your caravan. Absolutely. Deglaze the pan. Today we're going to fry it up into this lovely prawn and kingfish linguine. A quick fry to warm the fish through, add the linguine, Beautiful. and it's time to plate up. It's all about getting a nice bit of twist on that pasta for a bit of height. A little mix of microherbs. That looks good enough to eat. And I think that's what we should be doing right now. What do you reckon, Evan? Let's have a go. Good day. Stay tuned. Spicy, Up melon. next, we head on down to the fishing village of Eden. The final leg of our South Coast foodie trail finds us in Eden. We'll be hosting our happy hour party here later on. But now, at the crack of dawn, Chef Macca wanders down to the local wharf. It's a great time in the morning. I'm down here at Eden and I'm going muscling today. Muscling. Good morning, Daniel. Morning, Macca. How are you, mate? I'm absolutely pumped. That's good. Dan Highland co-owns Eden Muscles with his dad and has agreed to take Chef Macca aboard his harvesting boat. Eden's Twofold Bay is one of the deepest natural harbours in the world. Its pristine waters allow mussels to thrive, and we don't have to travel far to reach them. So all of these boys that you see here have ropes attached to them, and then there's little hanging lines that uh, come off each of them, and there's millions of mussels that are growing naturally in this beautifully pristine environment, and they're using all of the beautiful nutrients that are available here, and these guys are growing the premium, the premium mussels. They're huge. With a focus on sustainable farming methods, Eden Mussels has been harvesting from these nutrient-rich waters for over two decades. You can see them here, they're, they're in their natural environment, so they're quite dirty. They don't look like what you get on the plate, but they're, uh, yeah, they're pretty healthy, that's for sure. 
These plump, freshly harvested mussels are a must for our happy hour party. Chef Macca, you'd better get to work. This is the marine version of paddock to plate. Look at these fellas, pristine environment, they're going to cook up beautifully and I'm told they're plump. I've got this secret recipe that's going to bring the best out of these fellas. And we can't wait, Chef Macca. 90% of Eden mussels end up in Sydney restaurants, but if you're in the area on a weekday, you can buy them directly from the boat at the Eden Wharf. So this is sort of the day spa for mussels. They're getting a, um, they're not being de-bearded, but they're being washed. They're getting all of this growth is being cleaned off them. And this is what makes them superior to the uh, New Zealand mussels. These are just natural. While the mussels relax at the day spa, it's over to Tim, who has sniffed out an award-winning smokehouse. Hello, Stan. Hi, Tim. Hi. Nice to meet you. Likewise. I've heard a lot about your establishment and yeah. uh, the great smoke products that you're purveying at the moment. Where we fit in is an artisan gourmet. So we're really top of the line, in fact. You know, you're just looking at these ribbons, which we just won last week. And yeah. Salmon Gravlax. Gravlax. What's, what's Gravlax? Gravlax is a Scandinavian, it's in, the word's Norwegian, grav meaning ground, and lux means salmon. So in okay. the early days of food preservation, they'd salt them, put them in boxes, and put them in the ground. That was their fridge in a permafrost. Stan Soroka is extremely proud of his gourmet smoked meats. Stan was a food technologist at the now-closed Heinz Cannery in Eden. There, he worked closely with the former owners of Eden Smokehouse, and he eventually bought them out and transformed the place. It's up to Tim to discover why. I, I couldn't help notice we yep. have mermaid flossy salt. It doesn't have iodine and some of these other ingredients in there because it can actually change colour and flavour, so okay. it's a salt that's commonly used for curing. Right. We are trying to keep the old traditional flavours. Today, uh, they're using artificial smoke um, in cheeses and fish, because it's quick and easy. Time is money. I'm dying to try some of this produce, so please let me at it. Stan's Polish heritage has taught him the traditional techniques. Any chilled smoke product or any chilled food, you should let it warm up a bit, especially right. if it's got oils in it. Okay. Because the flavours are in the oils. Mm. And you'll probably notice the oils are starting to release. So that's where the flavours are. So if you start with the Gravlux, it's really uh, fine. Mm. <laughs> it melts in your mouth. That's why my mouth's not opening much because I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying them. That does, that's just... We have what's known as the wow factor. Okay. If it doesn't right. get a wow factor, it doesn't matter how good some people think it is, we just don't go ahead with it. And when asked how to cook this at camp... We don't expect the average person out there, camper or four-wheel drive or whatever, to do what we do. So what I can do is actually show how they could do it, just yeah. as a small smoker. Uh, a little bit of brine, whatever, and smoke it and eat it. For Stan the Man's hot smoking recipe, right. head over to rvdaily.com.au. And after the break, <laughs> it's happy hour time. As our South Coast foodie trail continues, we're just about ready to throw our happy hour party. But first, I'm off to meet some very special visitors. Eden is known as the Whale Highway. It's one of the best places in Australia to get up close and personal with these gentle giants. As we cruise out of Twofold Bay into the open ocean, it's not long before we have company. Thousands of humpback whales pass Eden each year, and the best time to see them is during their southern migration between September and November. So on their southern migration we see lots more of them. The mothers and calf pods uh, tend to stick a little closer to the shoreline. Eden is one of the few places in the world where humpback whales feed on their migratory route. Lucky for us, today they're hungry. I just had lunch. Yeah, they're feeding. And I think it's about that time for me too. So it's back to camp so that I can round up some troops for happy hour. Knock, knock. Hi. How's it going? We are throwing a happy hour party this afternoon. Yay! Over on the beach. Over on the beach at five o'clock. Meanwhile, Chef Macca is cooking up mussels for the party. So I'm just de-bearding them. To get started, he sautés onion and garlic in olive oil and butter. Then he adds chilli, 
and then a bit of parsley. That'll bring out the real flavour. Then, of course, nice throw in the heroes. In this beautiful glossy mixture. But I also want to add a little bit of white wine because that's the traditional method. Add some fresh tomatoes. And a little bit of colour, some green shallots. Give these a good shake, rattle and roll. And that's them on the fire for five Then let minutes. them steam until they open, which is how you know they're cooked. Look at these puppies. They've taken up all of that beautiful juice. Look at that. Just to finish it off, because it's a bit snobby. A little bit of garnish. All right, time to get going. Wrapping the laughing gear around this little morsel. These are gonna go down a treat at happy hour. But first, here's how you can win your very own Easy Trail Caravan. There's no better way to see the real Australia than by caravan. So we're giving you the chance to win an Easy Trail Sejuna 15. This luxurious family van has been given the RV Daily Foodie Trails tick of approval. We think you'll love the comfortable king size bed, the onboard bathroom and the functional outdoor kitchen for your very own foodie trails. Valued at $65,000, the Sejuna 15 has everything you need for your next adventure. All you have to do is bring the cheese and wine. To go into the draw to win this fantastic prize, head over to rvdaily.com.au. As the sun sets on another spectacular foodie trail, our happy hour party kicks off at the Eden Beachfront <laughs> Holiday Park. Hey guys! We're joined by the wonderful locals we've met along the way and plenty of fellow travellers too. It's a serious feast as we enjoy fresh seafood, cheese and gelato. And of course, Chef Macca's magnificent mussels. That is great. That has got some awesome flavour in that. This is what travelling our great land is all about. See you next time.